Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash android. Video bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Weekly Daily Gizwiz with Matt's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1,334, recorded Saturday, October 1st, 2011. Gadget Toys. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And now, get ready for Dick. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not attempt to adjust your sets. It's time for the Weekly Daily Dancing Weekly Daily Gizwiz Show starring Dick D. Bartolo. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how you doing? I am great. Look, we've got a great setup here for you with your name oh, in lights. Oh, in lights, amazing. Why am I pink? I thought we were green. Oh, our... yeah. Well, there's a reason. We have this remarkable new green screen technology. Oh, I got you. Okay. It allows me to put you anywhere. Oh my oh, God, God! He's disappeared, oh. and uh, and <laughs> where am I? Where, where is he? Where What's going oh. on? He's disappeared. <laughs> Pressing the wrong buttons, obviously. <laughs> but anyway, oh, if we have a, a green backdrop, what? Virtual inputs. Virtual inputs. Virtual inputs. There you go. Like just like that. <laughs> Come on in. It's okay. <laughs> Something's wrong. You know those forests. Wow. <laughs> He's really <laughs> wrong with his setup. But anyway, uh, there you <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dickie D. For those of you listening at home, just forget you heard anything at all. Yeah, exactly. Do we have a theme it's, for the show, the program well, today? Time to play. It fits in fine. With our time tunnel. With our time tunnel. And there was an event this week... Uh, Showing gadgets that people, that companies hope will be big for Christmas. So it's all toys on this end. And maybe by the time the fourth gadget comes around, you could find some toy or something to play so with. So it has to be a toy, huh? Well, it doesn't really have to be. Hmm. I mean, uh, we would just be thankful if it was something. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'll find something. I, it, it's going to be a toy. It'll be a, something that, that Leo likes to play with. Like my new green oh, screen the toy, actually. Studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the entire studio, exactly. Well, let's start with Gadget Numero Uno, Mr. DiBartolo. Okay, it's from a company called Dexim, D-E-X-I-M. They make a lot of uh, iPod add-ons. Mm -hmm. And they have a little thing, uh, an app, App Speed. And App Speed works in conjunction with their little monster trucks. Now, this is one of their monster trucks. Oh, that's cool. Oh, Leo, this guy is really neat. I sent you some video on it. Uh, it it's actually a little 55-second commercial, but if you want to see... So, basically, you buy the truck. The truck comes with a little... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, quiet! That was the trucks. All right, should I show the that video? Yeah, you, you, I'll tell you what. I'll just tell you what to look for. Okay, okay. so then it comes with a little... Uh, 
RC sender that goes in the bottom of your any of the uh, o, uh, iOS product. Uh, products and then you can control the truck either in the dry they call it gyro mode where just tilting your iPhone or whatever will drive the truck or you can put it into uh, the touch mode and, and drive it just by pressing on the screen but now here's what it looks like in motion ah cool so here I'll turn up the sound with the gravity sensor that it's, allows you to ah. manually steer your car or truck to get driving today Simply download the free app speed application from iTunes, charge the app speed, attach the RF transmitter, and go. So you're saying your 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 phone, your smartphone is your controller for this thing. Exactly. Or anything, or your iPad or your uh, iPod. I, I was using it with the iPod touch. And it has a couple of neat things. One is the uh, the little controller doesn't need any battery power because it uses it from your uh, Apple device. The little truck. So there's a controller that you plug into the. Uh, you yes, plug exactly. Into the iPad it, yeah, or yes. iPhone. And okay. the, the very first time you plug it in, it'll immediately say, "This needs the app. Would you like to download ah, the app?" Ah, got it. So but that's you, cool you know, because yeah. a smartphone is going to be a better uh, controller probably than anything that they could design. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then uh, the truck comes with a USB cable, so you plug it in, and there's a little dongle that lights up red, blinking red. When it stops blinking, the truck is charged. It took about 15 minutes. Well, I have some neat and trucks, too. It, they're, they're really neat. And now it also has a little menu with a couple of kind of bizarre things. There's the zigzag menu where you put on zigzag, and the truck just keeps going in a zigzag motion <laughs> <clears throat> has music mode now music mode was kind of fun because the truck dances to music but it turns out it can only dance to the one song that is in the software Oh, and it, the, the song is love L L da 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 you yeah, exactly. is all I ever had of who. I happen to like that song, but it would be not. I tried to get something from my iTunes library. Right, but right. Yeah, see, yeah, I don't want to play that over and over again. That's no, the, no. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what else could you do with this truck? Oh, okay. Since you, they show a lot of the video with it running over grass and, and running outdoors over pavement. They also include a little battery adapter. So you put in three AA batteries and then you can charge the truck from that. So that's if you want to charge the truck outdoors. If not, obviously it's way more economical to uh, charge the truck from USB or they say you can plug the USB into one of those AC USB adapters if you have one and charge it that way. 15 minutes of charging should give you up to a half hour of run time. Uh, blinking headlights. The guy, uh, it's retailing for about $59.99. Uh, list is $69.99. And the funny thing is, on their website, it says the monster trucks are our first two vehicles. More will be coming. Oh, and neat. I wanted to get some information from the website earlier. And between last night and today, they have added two remote control cars. So now you can either get monster trucks or you can get remote control cars. And I assume they all use the same software. Um, the website says it operates up to about 50 feet from the controller. And so you can do zigzag, spin, music, gyroscope, where you just tilt your phone the way you want the truck to go, or you can put it into a, a drive mode and run your finger across the screen where you want the truck to go. So it's really a lot of fun. It sounds really neat. I, I love it that you can use your smartphone. iPhone only, no Android uh, solutions? No, oh, oh, no, no. All, you know, the, all iPhone. There are 19 devices on the website. They are all iOS devices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no that's, the, that's, you know, that's what everybody has these days. So. <laughs> now, and that's why, oh, that's why I keep an iTouch. You know, I yeah, use uh, yeah. Android, but my iTouch lets me keep in the Apple loop. Myra Joyce, is she visiting you today? 
Yes, Myra yeah. Joyce is here. She's making dinner now. She's yeah. She just, <laughs> it's, you know, it's admire. She's just going to come every single week. She, she's gotta, also in the chat room. She's well, I know she's kind of like the back behind the stage, behind the scenes thing. But she says yeah, exactly. that she likes the big fat nubby tires on there. Yes, that's why it can run over land and grass, not the ocean, not the ocean, but uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a really fun device. Ooh, the hand! Is, oh, the hand is after us. That is not what I want to be. Sure. There it is. I wanted to find Dick DiBartolo. He's uh, going to join us uh, with uh, gadget number two. Am I correct? Yes. Let's check in. Hey, Dick DiBartolo with the weekly daily gives with video. I'm at uh, time to play. It's noisy in here, but bear with us. So there are apps for your iPad. This is an amazing app, and Sonny is going to talk about it. Sonny, tell us about this guy. Hello. I'm Sunny Lordson from Disney Consumer Products. Okay, good. And um, what we've announced today, just a couple of hours ago, is a whole new way to play with um, toy vehicles. So this is called Disney App Mates. App Mates, it, App -Mates. okay. They're sold in packs of two for $19.99, available on October 1st at retailers nationwide. The app is a free download, and it is playable without a car, although the experience is a little more, more limited. It's really meant to play with the vehicles, so you want to buy the cars. Um, you buy the vehicles, and then with no technology, in the toy itself so our goal here was to keep the toys as simple as possible and use the iPad to really bring them to life so no batteries required no LED lights no anything that can die in the toy and then when I put it down on the screen here you'll see that the iPad app recognizes the toy the direction I'm facing and then the screen interacts with me so by holding on to the sides of the windows here I can drive around and collect hubcaps that allow me to, to uh, buy virtual goods so I can customize my character I can can um, solve missions. So if we stop here with our friend Fillmore, what he wants us to do is break up the cactus that are behind um, behind him here because he thinks they're coming to get him. So he's going to ask us to help him out. We're going to accept the mission. We're going to drive back here and engage in a little fun, destructive play. Who doesn't love to make cactus salad? It's kind of interesting. So here we're just it, driving around. So so. I, I got to get this for Lisa's son. He's eight. He loves the iPad, but he also loves toy cars. So it's oh, he'll love he'll love these, Leo. And, and the timing's great because they were released October first, which is today. Today. And, and you get two cars for twenty dollars. To make it look like the toy itself has headlights, so you can see on the top of the vehicle, you've got some lights, and then you've got headlights oh, that's coming. Neat. If you want to move the, the uh, recorder down, you can see the headlights as I'm driving towards you. So they're lighting up without any battery or any um, technology. Is it sort of like fiber optics kind of thing? Um, it's this right here. <laughs> Fi yeah, that's fiber optics. These clear holes here. Yeah, it's called a mirror. <laughs> and the light goes up to the right. and redirects it. Well, I think it is fiber optics, Leo. So it picks up the light from the board and it sends it so the headlights right. look like they're lit. Cool. Uh, because there's no technology in the cars at all. Yeah. Are these, uh, is, so this is a Pixar's car, or Disney, yeah, Pixar cars, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, and so four cars from uh, Cars 2 are available anywhere. And then uh, late in November or middle November, they're going to have two special cars that will only be available at the Apple Store. That's neat. Uh, That's really neat. They are, they are really great fun. We gotta and, get and, those. Yeah. Yeah. And each each car tells the uh, iPad w what car it is, and it, it does different activities depending on what what car. Also, oh, there's is. a magnet or something in there that they can sense. That it senses, yeah. and they're called App Disney App Mates. That's neat. It's. So, yeah. Dick, let's uh, let's take a little break. We've got another gadget. I've got, I think, uh, a pretty exciting turn the table turkey. It's um, it's uh, my new phone, and I love it. New technology, um, okay. and then uh, we've also got a warehouse Friday and a lot more coming up. But before we do any of that, should we perhaps talk about our sponsor, my friends? I'm talking to you about Netflix. Yeah, yeah I love. Netflix uh, for seven dollars ninety nine cents a month. There's no better bargain in video at home. I sit down. I've got the Roku box, but you could do this with uh, so many devices and, and your iPad too, your Mac, your PC. Uh, if you want to do it on the TV, almost all the boxes that hook up to TVs these days, including Blu-ray players, support Netflix. So there's like kind of no limit. I loved this. I you know I watched Saturday Night Live and they have 
you can go pretty much watch every episode of Saturday Night Live. They've got the original first year. They've got the 2000s. Then they also go by various uh, uh, stars. So they've got the best of Will Ferrell and so forth. So if you're in the mood, even if it's not a Saturday night, you can watch this. They've got a lot of great movies, classics like Fellini's Eight and a Half, modern movies uh, like, uh, let's see, um, let's pick, oh, there's Iron Giant for the kids, um, Meet the Parents, Barely, le barely Legal, wow. Anyway, there's a lot, oh, Topsy Turvy, that was fun, the Gilbert and Sullivan movie, I loved that, Mike Lee movie. Anyway, it's you get the idea. This is entertainment like crazy, uh, and it's all yours for $7.99 a month. Uh, streamed right to your iPad or your iPhone or your TV or any Android phone now, too. Oh, there's the Ralph Nader uh, documentary, An Unreasonable Man. That's a good one to watch. Um, I love the documentaries on here. So all we're saying is if you don't have a Netflix subscription, try it free for 30 days. Go to Netflix.com slash twit. And, you know, if like most of our listeners, you already have a Netflix subscription, just to tell your friends, they're going to love it. Netflix.com slash twit. We thank you for supporting the Daily Gizwis. Goodness knows somebody has to pay for all these special effects. Yeah. Leo, someone had a good idea. They put the link up there from my boat webcam. Oh. You could put my boat. You could put the Should marina. I put the boat in the... Um... Well, you, it, Is your be webcam the still people? up? Yes. People love it so much I left it up. You see it up there? It's from uh, KVNDI. Yeah, I do. So, yeah. so this is a, a drop cam that you have out on the dock there at the marina. No, the, 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 uh, it's in the, the windshield of my work boat. It's in the boat. The Hudson River. It's in ah. the boat facing the Hudson. So we should get, let's see, it's 555. It's probably still a fair amount of light down there. And it'll be, look, it should look like a porthole, like we're looking out a porthole. Oh, that. this is great. We're uh, looking at the boat there. Yeah, I've tried, got to talk, talk my neighbor into uh, I'm getting a little moving seasick, his boat up a couple of feet. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wow, that's very realistic. We'll use this from now on when we want to simulate a boat out the... Oh, oh, yeah, well, oh, have, oh yeah. no, the water is... is it's yeah, Oh, yeah. my goodness, the seas. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> During the week when the ferries run, you won't have to do that manually. <laughs> It'll just It'll just rock. do that. It'll do that. So uh, how can people uh, watch your uh, drop cam? Is there a, a web address that you can get? Uh, you know what? I will put the web address on... Oh, you know, just go to dropcam.com. Are you in the front page there, the demo page? You know, I was. Disneyland... Disneyland. So just search for Disneyland. Disneyland on webcam, uh, on dropcam.com. Awesome. All right, time for your third gadget of the week. Okay, D -D. third gadget of the day. What do you think this might be? Mm -hmm. It looks like yeah. something that you would attach to something else to inflate it. No, I'll tell you that when you buy this device, this is the only thing in the box. That's there it. There are no attachments. It doesn't attach to anything. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, well, I'm going to give you... It looks like I'm it's gonna, got a speaker on the back. Is it a radio? Well, it has a speaker. That was good. I'm going to give you a, my first live demo. Oh, how Wait exciting. Yeah, ha hang on. Let me just put this up here. And I may ask Myra to, oh, that, uh, yeah, just hold that like that. Oh, that, I, Marmot's got it. He says it's a flux capacitor. Uh -huh. Oh, wait, turn out the lights. Okay, turn out the lights. That's a good, that's a good idea. What are we going to see? Whoa. Okay, well, okay well. let me just. Oh, it's a fireworks projector. <laughs> it is your, it's, it's called your in the room. That is just weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, it, it is kind of weird. Uh, it, it's from uh, a company called Uncle Uncle Milton. And they make kind of, uh, oh, the shark came in to watch too. Yeah. Oh, is, did my boat sink? Is that a shark? <laughs> I think we're underwater. I hate to say it, Dick. That, by the way, this is the RC swimmer that you recommended. We've had lo lots of fun, hours of laughs. Uh, I get, I get, I have such a funny letter about that when we get to the letters thing. Yeah, this little guy is called uh, Uncle Milton's Fireworks Light Show. That's just bizarre. So it's a projector. 
it, it's a projector, Leo. Uh, it, it has a th this big ring will tune in, let let you pick out eight different fireworks, and the sound is synchronized to each different image. And you start it by just pulling back. That starts the sound, and then you. What happens if I point this at the camera? Uh, yeah, don't point this at your eyes. No. Um, and it launches it, and you have different sound effects. I mean, it, it'd be great fun for a party to, to uh, show off. It runs on four AA batteries. And the neat thing is it's about 20 bucks. Uh, list price is 30 bucks. Walmart has it for 23 but... On Amazon, I saw one place has it for nineteen ninety five. That's a lot so less fun. than I paid for fireworks the last Fourth of July. Those are those things add up. <laughs> yes, Jeez. exactly. And safer, yeah. yeah. No matches. No matches. Views. Safe and no sane. heat. Yep. Yeah. No light. Uh, Basically, they're yeah. just dumb. But for somebody like you that would actually go out in a boat and watch fireworks on the skyline, this is great. Yeah, I wish they made one with a big laser in it so I could just go out there and <laughs> shoot them in the sky. That's a good, now, now you're talking. Now you're now the gas. Done. Now we have a million-dollar idea. Yeah. All right, Dick, I am ready, if you are ready, to do my turn-the-table turkey. So will you do the honors, please? Yeah. Hey, Dick Dick Bartolo, Maz Madison, to end the Gizwiz. It's just one day a week, and folks, is that not just plenty for Leo's Turn the table, turkey! Oh, look, I found some crap over here. It's really great. It's turn the table, turkey! What's up with the shark? What's up with the shark? All right, we are ready. The uh, turn the table, turkey today is a phone. You know what's happening, of course. That this this quarter, this last quarter of uh, 2011, is going to be a big quarter for new high-end phones. Uh, yes. As we record this Tuesday, we expect Apple to announce their new iPhone. Um, Windows Phone 7 has just released their Mango update with some new Mango handsets. In fact, in the next few weeks, I'll probably be reviewing that for you because they're sending me another Mango phone. But I thought before those hot new phones came out, I would try, as you know, I'm an Android fan love Android phones, I would try the latest, greatest, state-of-the-art Android phone so that I have something to compare these other phones with. Oh, so I went good. to Sprint. The, 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 I think the hottest platform out right now, this may be arguable, uh, there's the Droid Bionic, which is pretty cool, but this, to me, I think these are, this is the hottest Android phone out there right now. It's, it's the Samsung Galaxy S2. I had a Galaxy S. I really liked it. The S2 is considerably improved in functionality and hardware. And this one came to me. I bought it uh, from Sprint. This is the Sprint version of it, which unaccountably they call the Epic 4G Touch. Even though on the back, okay. it says Galaxy S2. Okay. Okay. And it has nothing to do at all with the Epic so, Touch. That Leo, first do you have a contract with every carrier? I do. I do. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that way I can test the best phones from each game. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. So a couple of things you might like about this. I know you really like the Droid X, right? I do. And that was because it had a big 4.3-inch screen. This is 4.5. It's just a little bit bigger. Okay. Same screen resolution, though. So the effect is the text and icons are a little bit larger, and I think actually a little bit reader. Uh, easier to read, a little easier, a little, little bit clearer. Um, Samsung is again using their Super AMOLED display. It's an OLED display. Oh, yeah, those are really oh, bright. They're just spectacular. The blacks are really, really dark. The bright colors really jump out at you. And I, I think they've done a very, very nice job with this phone. Uh, it's really spectacular. It also is a du dual core processor running at 1.2 gigahertz. So there's lots of RAM in this as well. And that means that this is a very fast phone. In fact, this to me, the, the re, one of the reasons to get this is it's, the, it's absolutely the fastest phone I've ever used. I mean, faster than, and I had a, a, a G2X dual processor phone. I've tried many of the dual processor phones. To me, this is absolutely the fastest phone I've ever used. It's just snappy as all get out. Uh, and, and that means um, it f because of that, it's more than just speed. It feels fluid. It feels like it just, it's just responsive. I've been very happy about that. It comes with a lot of uh, memory. There's um, 
uh, I, about 800 meg megabytes of uh, um, RAM. There's, a, I think, an 8 gigabyte SD card. And then I put in another 32 gigabyte SD card. Uh, it has room for an SD card slot there. So this really has a lot of storage. I've got 40 gigabytes. If you think about that, this phone is, you know, faster and better and more powerful than a computer that I had just a few years ago. Dual 1.2 gigahertz processors, nearly a gig of RAM, 40 gigs of storage, and it's something that fits in my pocket. And I like the big screen uh, because it, it really is uh, easy to read and legible. I'm just going to snap the back on here. Uh, one more time. Um, let me see. What else can I uh, tell you about this phone? Well, uh, it looks like it has front and back cameras. It does. It has a front-facing camera, and because it's using a gingerbread, um, Android uh, uh, gingerbread on here, which is 2.3.4, I can use things like um, uh, Google Talk and make uh, video calls. You see the camera is turned on there. So I can make video calls to anybody else who's got a uh, recent model Android phone. So that's kind of like Apple's uh, FaceTime. Uh, but you can also use uh, things like Tango and, uh, and other programs that use the front-facing camera. The back-facing camera is excellent. It's an 8 megabyte uh, megabit camera, I should say, that just gives really excellent uh, performance um, and has a lot of functionality, a lot of controls. Um, you can turn on a lot of features here, including things like scene modes, built-in effects, uh, white balance, ISO, metering, outdoor visibility. One of the things that I like is this is one of the few Android phones I've found that does what the iPhone does, which means you tap an area and it will focus and expose in that area. That makes it really easy to get oh, yeah. a picture that's focused on the thing that you like. It's also, you can see how fast it is. I mean, it really takes pictures very quickly. I, uh, I actually added a a program that I really I found recently that really like a couple of bucks. It's called HDR Camera Plus. It takes HDR images. Now watch. I'll just do a quick HDR image. It's going to do three exposures. One, two, three. At three different uh, quality, um, uh, uh, three different exposure levels, and it really does a great job of getting extremely good images. Wow. I just, yeah, I'm just very happy with the crystal clarity of the. Uh, of the 8 megapixel camera. You know, it looks fairly thin also. Well, that's the amazing thing. I mean, it is a giant screen, but look how thin it is. And it feels light and thin in your in your hand. You know, it's hard for me to hard for you probably to uh, to get a sense of the thinness. So let me get a pencil cuz this is what uh, this is what Amazon just did with their Kindle Fire. Let me get a pencil. And I'll okay. What Leo doesn't know is that we've rigged the phone so that it will go off. <laughs> Let me just compare it. So if you compare it to a pencil, you'll see that oh, it, yeah. it's actually it's thinner, very, very, yeah. much thinner than a pencil. So, no, um, I, I mean, I I have to say, I, I really... <laughs> you don't have the, one of those dollar bills there from that guy. <laughs> this is what made me get this pencil, by the way. I saw that dollar <laughs> bill and I thought, hey, that's cool. I, I wonder if there's anything else I could use to compare phone size. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, yeah wow. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I love this phone. Um, let me talk a little bit for people who've used Android phones about um, some of the, you know, placement of, of, of buttons and so forth. It has, uh, uh, as with most Android phones nowadays, in fact, most phones in general, it uses the micro USB. It's on the bottom, which is, I think, where it belongs. Some phones put it on the side or top. On the top is a standard uh, headphone jack. Uh, it's got a button on the right for on and off, and then the volume controls are on the left. And then the buttons at the bottom, you know what's really funny with Android is these are all different arrangements. Some uh, uh, Android phones now don't have a search button and so forth. This is a pretty standard arrangement. It's got the menu button, then the home button, the back button, and the search button. And now I know a lot of people will be talking a lot about the new uh, uh, assistant that's built into uh, the uh, iPhone which allows you to dictate to the iPhone. Of course, Android's had that for some time. If I press and hold the search button, listen to Bob Dylan. I'm now talking to the phone. I'm dictating to the phone, and I'm going to have this. This phone will actually, believe it or not, uh, start playing Bob Dylan music. I have to choose which service I'm going to use. This is the first time I've done it that way. So it loads Spotify, and it's now playing Holy Bob cow. Dylan. So uh, let's try it again. Oops. Probably should pause the music. That might confuse it. Let's see if we can do this again. So, Leo, suppose Listen you to Barry Manilow. It really does quite a good job. Within five or ten seconds, we're listening to Mandy. 
<laughs> Isn't that great? I can also use navigate yeah. too. I can send messages too. Let's try one here like this. You can, can you send with text it? to Dick D. Bartolo. Message, yikes, I love this phone. Oh, okay. Send text message to Dick D. Bartolo. I shouldn't show your phone number there. And, yep, it dictated exactly right. And if I press send, you're going to get a text message from me. Holy exactly cow. that. Did you, isn't that amazing? Now, yeah. that's the generic Android feature. Suppose you don't know me. Can it go to somebody else? It could go to, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or is it like that car that only has that one phone? In it? It's only got one phone number. One phone so it makes it a lot easier. This is uh, the TouchWiz interface that Samsung made famous. I actually like this TouchWiz interface. I've changed some of the widgets. This is a beautiful widgets widget, which, which looks more like HTC. But you get four big icons. These are changeable uh, in the bottom. Uh, TouchWiz has some nice um, additions. Uh, features. For instance, they have their own uh, Vinigo, uh, built in Vinig uh, Vinigo uh, voice command, or Vlingo, I guess it is, voice command. Very similar to the uh, Android uh, voice command, but you know, if you get a choice. There's also a driving mode, which is cool, um, that does very much like Apple's Assistant. We'll read back to you what you said and then say, is that correct? Which makes it easier not to have to tap the screen too much if you're doing uh, so dictation. So, can I do that on my Android phone then, my X2? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you're using, uh, I believe, 2.3 or later, uh, you'll have to check I and think see. It, I think I do have 2.3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, that's, that's one thing that people don't know about, but that is a feature of Android. Um, they do some other interesting things. Samsung has put in some switches. You notice I pulled down the, the this is the standard uh, notifications menu on Android phones. And they've put their switches here of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound, and 4G. I could turn that off and on. I tried this with 4G. Now, this is one of the things about this phone. This is a 4G phone. That means uh, I can use this in areas where we have 4G service, not Petaluma, but I took it to San Francisco and I was getting four megabits down and one and a half megabits up. I was getting very good speed on this phone. Um, that's, that's pretty remarkable if you're in a 4G area. Uh, so all in all, I think this is a spectacular phone. Uh, it's an Android phone, uh, but um, with some additional features from Samsung. Uh, I got this, get this from Amazon Wireless with a new Sprint account, $150. Whoa! But you, but that's Amazon Wireless only. Most of the time, if you go into a Sprint store, it'll be two hundred dollars, which is kind of the standard now. And that's, of course, with a new account. If you have an existing account, it's going to cost quite a bit more. Uh, this is, uh, this is. There are a number. Every carrier has a Galaxy S two, AT and T, uh, T Mobile, Verizon, and Sprint. Um, they're all fairly comparable, but I think Sprint's done a very nice job. There's all in, in each case. There's a little bit of customization. Let's not call 911, shall we? Uh, but it, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. in each case, uh, I think that they've done um, a good job. But this, I, I have to say, I think this is, might be the, my favorite one, especially because it's uh, four and a half inches on the screen, which doesn't, you know, it seems like, gee, that's going to be awfully big. Uh, but, well, you know, it pops in your pocket and everything just like a, a normal phone. I, I don't find it too big, especially because it's so thin. Um, I think that's one of the reasons that it uh, doesn't feel too unwieldy. And it's, it's nice and light. It's all plastic. It's not metal. But they've done a nice job of, uh, like, for instance, the back is textured uh, plastic. And so it gives it a little bit more refined feel. Uh, I love this phone. It's going yeah. to be tough for me to give this up uh, for the next iPhone or the next uh, Windows phone. But I promised that I would give each of them uh, a fair few weeks uh, review. Well, yeah, what sort of battery life? Have you had it for a while? To Yeah, it's pretty uh, typical battery life for uh, Android phones. Um, I, w I have not had a problem getting through the day at all uh, with it. It has some nice smart features, power management's built in, so when you get low, it'll start doing things to save you battery. Uh, 4G does eat battery like crazy, but they do some smart things with 4G. For instance, it turns off when you get to Wi-Fi. It turns off when you're not using data, so they do uh, attempt to manage the battery with 4G. Without 4G, I would say it's as good as any Android phone I've ever used. It's about 10 hours, I would say, battery life wow. uh, okay. with, normal, with normal usage. I've been very happy with the uh, battery life. Normally what I do, uh, something you can't do with an iPhone, is uh, I just buy a second battery and uh, ch keep that charged and carry it with me if I know I'm going to be away from a charger for more than, say, eight or nine hours, and I could just swap a new battery into it. Uh, multitasking works very smoothly, uh, very efficiently. Uh, I, I think this is just an excellent uh, phone with lots of storage, lots of room, in the, and boy, is it fast. I, I don't think there's a faster uh, phone out there right now. We'll have to see because the new iPhone is reputed to have a lot of memory and very fast processors. This is the 
uh, oddly named Epic 4G Touch from Sprint, but you might know it better as a Galaxy S2 class phone. If you can, any carrier, uh, I think the Galaxy S2 is a very, very good choice. So, but yeah, next week, uh, next week we will probably have a Windows phone to talk about, and who knows, maybe the week after that, I'll be able to compare this pencil to the new iPhone 5. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this actually writes. I don't know what I'm gonna do. With really? I don't know how I'm gonna sharpen it. That's my only my only problem. Yeah. Oh, I have a sharpener for that in the warehouse. Do you? It weighs 51 pounds. <laughs> if I'm ever murdered with a pencil in the back of my neck, you'll know who did it. <laughs> All right, Dickie D, now. This is the part I look forward to each and every week. The time when we face our gruesomest fears. The time when we deal with our own mortality and the fact that none of us, none of us, will survive as long as the cheesiest little gadget on the warehouse on the shelf at Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play in Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Mm -hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a little... Is that shark tickling shark. your nose? He's, he's, he's hitting me in the nose. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, Dick DiVartolo. Come on, go. Come on, shark. Shark. Come on, Stop go. it. Knock it off. Knock it oh, off. Dude. Oh, now he's taking the TV set with him. <laughs> I think he's attached. Oh, uh, there we go. All right, what's yeah, you okay. got? Okay. Well, I, I thought, you know, I'm doing toys this week. I should get a toy from the warehouse. And, and I was looking around my apartment. I said, wait a minute. I have a 35-year-old toy that's been sitting on a shelf for just about 35 years, and it's, it's a train. Right now, I run G-scale trains, but a long time ago, I ran Lionel trains, and in 1976, I bought myself a Lionel Hudson Steam Locomotive, uh, I put a picture up on my website, Leo, right on the opening page, gizwiz.biz. And, you know, trains are, you, you call trains by the number of wheels. So it's the Lionel 464 Hudson Steam Locomotive. And the fun thing Ooh, was... Is that pretty? Oh, With I love Google, that. you find out amazing things. So I started doing some research... And it's called something from the MPC. It says, this is one of the rare locomotives from Lionel's MPC era. And I go, okay, back to Google. What's the MPC era? <laughs> the way well, right, no, don't tell me. The model personal computer. No. No, no. Okay, well, you, you're close. You're close. The model personal const construction. What is it? Oh, no, okay. It was from Model, Model Products Corporation. Oh. But what was bizarre about it, and, and I knew, you know who owned the Model Products Corporation? Who did, Dick? It, it was a division of General Foods. What? I, uh, General Mills, I'm sorry. Yes, I know. I remember someone saying, did you know General Mills bought Lionel trains? And I go, what, is that, what are they going to put them in boxes of cereal? What are you talking about? That's just so it strange. Turns, yes, yeah, I know. And it said during when General Mills was producing under license Lionel trains, they became known as the MPC era trains because they were produced in, in the General Mills division. Hmm. So it turns out my... My locomotive was only made for one year, and it's not worth a lot of money. It, it's worth 150 bucks used, but it says that it's very hard to find a locomotive with the matching tender, which had a sound unit in this, oh. so that it, it made sounds of steam. Correct and, me if I'm wrong, but that looks like a tender. As you see, I have the locomotive and tender. Ooh. Yes, it do. Uh, it's not running more than uh, it's not running about thirty-five years. But if you're a collector, hey, 
and you want to swap something, give me a shout. Um, but it's kind of fun. And, and I bet Google's you could get that running again. I mean, somebody could take it apart and make I'm it sure work. I'm sure I could. Yeah. Um, you know what? Probably, I mean, just for last, I just pushed it along the tracks and the wheels turn so it's not frozen. So my guess, if I had a transformer and a circle of O-gauge track, it would probably run oh. okay. Oh. But, yeah. So and, anyway. and somebody in the chat room is saying, and I think you're probably right, the tender is probably worth more than the train. You know, you're probably right. You know what's so funny, Leo, about, about trains is when I got, uh, when I first found out about LGB trains, someone had written me a letter and said there are trains that can run outdoors. And so I called the company and, and said, you can leave these outdoors and they'll run even if it's raining. The guy said, absolutely. He said, I'll send you a set. You play with them. So I put them out in my backyard and I left them out there for six months. And then I had a camera crew from CNBC come in, and I said, okay, it's not, it's not raining, but we'll throw buckets of water oh, on them. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you, nuts? <laughs> no, which we did, and they ran fine. And it did run. So, wow. they were, right. I mean, they're wildly expensive. Locomotives are like four and $500. That's but like they, what a real locomotive would cost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what a train ticket costs these yeah, days. No to go to, but yeah. That's Amtrak uh, they've prices. They've been out there for 12 years. They run flawlessly. Really? They After have, 12 years? And, and they never come in. Uh, they... In the winter, I put them under a little shed, which is which is open at each end and has big windows in it. They are just amazing. LGB trains are amazing. And then I ran the spot on CNBC, and and the guy from LGB called and said, "Oh, that was great. Thanks so much." I said, "Well, I hate to send this train back." He said, "Ah, oh, we don't want it back." I said, "Well, it's in my backyard." And he said, "Well, how big is your backyard?" I said, "It's 20 by 40 feet." He said, "I oh, will send you a 20 by 40 feet track." Oh, that's great. And can have it run around the yard. So, so my my Lionel trains have been retired, but my LGB trains continue to run. How exciting! Exciting. How exciting. Oh, and you know, just for people listening live Monday and Tuesday, can I mention that October is National Adopt a Pet Month, yeah. Adopt a Pet Shelter Month, and Tuesday Guinness Book of Records is coming to Central Park. For an event put on by Petco and Sony, Sony's going to uh, have camera equipment to show people how to take pictures of pets. And they're trying to gather more than 250 people with their pets. And these have to be pets adopted from a shelter. And you need proof from the shelter that you adopted the pet. So the record is 250. They're going to try and get more than 250 parents and their pets to set the new record. Uh, I'm going to be there covering it for World News Now for ABC. So if you're in New York City, it's Tuesday, Central Park. Uh, registration's four. The event starts at five. And the counting of the dogs and their owners is at 530. Oh. So if you're around, oh, that's, <laughs> oh, these are some great pictures you have. Is this from the Petco website? Yeah, yeah. These are all adopted pets. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's one live human in it there. Seems like a I shark in there. <laughs> shark. Yeah, this is just I, you know, bring the shark if you have adoption papers. Uh, bring the shark. <laughs> and if, and the other thing is, if you're in New York City on October 16th, it's the uh, weekly Daily Gizwiz meetup. So go to my website, click on Dick's log and blog. Myra will be there. And uh, we'll be playing, oh, these are great pictures. Oh, they're lovely pictures. Yeah. yeah. We'll play games, give away prizes, give away meds, give away Alfred E. Newman pictures. This is great. Yep. It's great. Kitty, 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 kitty. kitty. Hey, oh, kitty. <laughs> cool. So find out more about that. Uh, you know, all I did was Google uh, Petco and Sony, and I came right up with the website. Um, Petco Adoption reunion.com hey and by the way if you're talking about tuesday you know something else is going on tuesday the new yeah, iphone this, yeah this, this phone thing yeah, so, yeah. Tune in. We'll so how, how, how is it covering that we're just gonna we're not invited as usual but we're gonna uh, 
uh, sit in our studio and, and, and talk about it. Uh, and, of course, there are lots of people inside who are live blogging. And maybe Apple will do a stream. We keep asking them to. But uh, if we're lucky, Apple will do a stream and we'll be able to cover it that way. But in, in any event, what we'll be doing is, wait a minute. Okay, I just, I, I thought there was a shark in the shot with you, but I, I, that must be my imagination. Maybe. No, no. no you think it, there's a shark there? You know what, Leo? I borrowed like 20 bucks two months ago. Oh, a loan shark. Yeah, and oh. he's all by himself. I guess that's him. I always thought a lawn shark would look different than this, but I guess not. It's it, that's a lawn shark, not a loan shark. You. Guys. Oh, oh, okay. That's why. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, in any event, uh, so tune in at ten o'clock Pacific, two p.m. Eastern. I'm sorry, one p.m. Eastern, and we'll be uh, live talking about the Apple announcements, and then I'll, we'll talk about it next week on the Daily Gizmos. I don't think the uh, phone will be available right away. But if it is, oh. I'll certainly have a review uh, for you, at least a first-look review. You know, I've heard uh, from a pretty reliable source. I thought we wouldn't see a, a 4G phone from Apple this time around. But I've heard from a pretty reliable source that, in fact, this might well be a 4G phone wow. uh, on at least the AT&T network. So that's going to be something to watch for. Yeah. And, and the room is that they're also going to have a cheap version of an iPhone. Are you, you know, that rumor has now that? disappeared again. The others oh, it have, has? Yeah, okay. it comes and goes. And the latest is no. So oh, I don't okay, know. okay. These rumors, they, they go around. I know, that, I know that you, as research, that... Most members uh, on your staff spends a lot of time in bars in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hoping that somebody... <laughs> Mo mostly, frankly, in tequila bars. That seems to be our favorite place to hang out. Yeah. yeah. Is that where they normally, uh, Apple likes Apple, to leave phones? Apple seems to le leave phones in tequila bars primarily, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, it's nice to be able to do that and write it off as an expense. <laughs> oh, we'll do anything. To, we'll do anything to write it off. Actually, I have a, I have an image from uh, from uh, our our research uh, sortie of last night. If you'd if you'd like to see it, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes. I'm, not sure I'm not sure who's in this picture, but uh, there we are looking for. See that? Phone? Oh, is that an Apple is, phone? Is on that the an deck? iPhone? Is that an iPhone? What is that? Uh, 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 this actually, just to, to go full circle, is a high def image, uh, high uh, dynamic range image, I should say, taken by uh, that uh, Galaxy 2S. Wow, uh, yeah, that is really nice. Really, I think very crisp, really nice images. And this was a fairly dark bar. This is using the flash uh, on the camera. So, uh, pretty good, pretty good job. But uh, enough about that. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to bring in. The king for our letters. It's like you're having a shark sandwich there. I, I was going to say, I think the shark is going to read the letter for me. <laughs> He's getting right in there. <laughs> All right, Dick. Uh, our letter is, uh, Dick, I met you at the San Diego Comic Con. I've read Mad Magazine for many years. I'm an avid watcher of Leo's programs, so I watch you guys every Saturday. I want to tell you, I got an air swimmer shark for my adult son's birthday. Uh -huh. We had a small party for him. He had a great time with the shark. It really does work quite well. He parked it firmly in the dining room, and the next day it broke loose. <laughs> found the back door and escaped. Oh, no. Yeah, now I really think that our dog, who does not did not like the shark, let him loose when we weren't looking. <laughs> the dog was resting in the patio near the door when we noticed the shark was gone. The shark was great fun, however, while we had him. Who knows where he finally landed after escaping. I haven't heard of any shark attacks, thank goodness. Uh, take care. Keep smiling and doing what you guys do so well. Linda Morgan. Aww. So, Linda, that is the weirdest thing, that it, you never found your shark. I don't know where it could have gone. Wow. No. Is this shark, is that your shark? Does that shark have a license plate that shows it's yours? <laughs> it has a serial number on its snout. I don't know. Oh, okay. No, this is okay. ours. We. This is the one you had them send us. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's great. It's great. That... <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun with it. 
Dick, we had a lot of fun on the uh, Weekly Daily Gizwiz. Oh, I love, I love this show. I so tell much you. fun. And I thank you for it. It is. And there. also, we're finally, you know, we're, we're getting a rhythm, Leo. I think we're loosening up a bit. You know, after the 1,300, yeah, I would shows. say that I, I would say the first, oh, 1,289 episodes were very stiff and, you know, lack, you know, lacking enthusiasm. Yes. And we, we were afraid to, like, step away from the script. No, absolutely. For the first, you know, 1,333 episodes, I think we really felt quite limited. That this was a breakthrough today, I think. Right now. I, I think that the fact that you said, Dick, let's be a little <laughs> nutty. Relaxed. Yeah, a little relaxed. I think that was the word you used. Yeah, a little more relaxed. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the shark didn't hurt either. No, the shark, was, the shark didn't hurt at all, even though he tried to bite me. Open the door, will you? I'm going to let him go. Find that other shark. <laughs> All right, my friends, thank you for being here, Dickie D. Thank you all for watching the show. Uh, thanks to our shark wranglers, Alex Gumpel uh, and uh, Liz. He, he does it right. No, Liz is not here today, but uh, Liz. Oh, okay. I know she's our hands, our eyes, and our hands. And yes. Our feet no, but, but Colin Weir, I think, helped out quite a bit, and Brent By, who 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 was, did all the lighting for the shark, and there's there's Lisa Collins. Hello. <laughs> hey, there's a show going on here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I guess this must be a signal that it's time to go home. Thanks, Dick. We'll see you all later. Thanks for joining us on the weekly Daily Gizwiz. Bye-bye. I'll be here. Oh, Dick. Oh, Dick. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, no. It's filling up with water. Oh, Dick. Oh, no. Oh, no, Dick. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I shouldn't have moved the mess. <laughs> now, that's quality television. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to see this on the networks.